Hello, Fruit Force. Once again, this is Captain Fruit reporting for duty for another episode of Road Rage. <clears throat> just for the ones of you that are not familiar with Road Rage, Road Rage is off the cuff videos where just more of a conversational tone where I usually have a hands free set so I'm while I'm driving. But today, actually, I'm not driving. I got in. It was, I didn't want to do this while driving. I, I'm, I'm actually doing a, my morning walk. I try to do a morning walk every morning, get up a little extra early so I can do that. And just speak about what's on my mind. And that's, you know, the. The mental, and I'm not, just so you know, I want to preface this video. This is not a, using a mental illness or anything in a derogatory state or any in, intent of that nature. And here's the thing. I, it seems to me there's a large amount of mental illness or mental illness on the cusp in comic, with the professional comic book writers and artists. Now, the reason I say that is is one of the things you see with uh, people that have mental illness, usually when they hit right stage five out of seven, you're starting to see delusion and, and, and dementia. And that means they see things that aren't really there. <laughs> and we see that with these these writers and artists. They, they're fine and everything's okay. And then something very small, very minor sets them off on a tirade. Or then when it is something major, like maybe a president one that they don't like, it's the worst thing on earth, and it's terrible, and they wish all the negativity when any time, even if the president that you, the person becomes president that you did not choose and did not want, you want them to do well because they serve your country. <laughs> but they don't. They want ill will, and that, that's part of it. They, they get triggered. There's a, a very fast uh, trigger in, in movement to aggravation when things are out of your norm or not going your way with people with dementia. They get very mad very quick, and you can't reason with them because in their head, that's the only way it is. It's an illness. They can't help it. It's the actual sickness. And the reason this comes to my mind is there's selective outrage, for one. They, they can see all kinds of stuff from their own group, their own peer group, and it's okay, but it's very rare exceptions, and they'll show the warning, hey, you better side with this or we're going to come down on you and you'll be kicked out of our, our special club, if you will. But I, I see these definite parallels because, you know, myself right now, I'm dealing with a family member that's having a very steep slope in mental illness. And I mean incredibly steep. That, that's one of the reasons why you probably haven't seen me do as much online right now. I'm not on Twitter as much. I'm not doing as many review, interviews with people. I just can't do it right now because it, this is taking up a lot of my time. Spur of the moment issue I have to take care of right away. So it's making it very challenging. And I don't like setting up interviews with people, telling them I'm going to do it, and then not do it. So, so anybody also that's been wanting me on their show and things, I'm not avoiding you I'm not, or anything. It's just... Things are challenging right now. But that's the thing. I'm seeing the same things from a person with severe mental illness with these comic book pros. It's absolutely crazy. And once again, I'm not saying that in meanness. Now, that makes me wonder, why do we have this issue with these comic book pros? Well, one big trigger to help is stress. Large amounts of stress can pose mental problems. It can lead to more mental issues. And finance is one. A big stressor is finance. And you know, and we know, these people are not exactly paid very well. And I'm not, this is not a, hey, let's unionize. I'm, no, I'm not doing any of that. You know, this is a this is an agreement they chose. They went to this field knowingly about the pay and accepting the pay. But, you know, it, it's not exactly the easiest of life. Unless you get really lucky and get really big. And still, even then, it can be troublesome. So, you know, they've got these financial triggers and things, probably all these stresses. And whoever knows what else, because they've always seemed to have a fight they have to pick. So they're bringing all this stress on themselves. They could be bringing so much stress with finances, finding things, the, the war over constantly, rather than actually being happy, that they're creating a bad mental state for themselves. There's that mental illness. Think about a time maybe that you were very stressed out. Because most of the time, a triggering event that happens, something that you would have done out of norm, isn't because of that one event. It's because of a series of a lot of events that all piled down, and it was the one that finally was the trigger. You know, I, I'll give you an example. When I was a man, I was a manager at a particular place once. Incredibly nice gentleman, immensely huge. <laughs> he was like pure muscle, like football, kind of three hundred and eighty pounder kind of guy. 
And he was always very nice. And one day I asked him to do something on the job because I was his boss and that was my job to do. He literally picked me up and threw me. <laughs> now, granted, back then I weighed like 163 pounds. I was a twig, but, but nonetheless, he actually threw me. And after he did that, he instantly realized what he did and what he did was wrong and broke down in tears. It's not an action he normally would have done. He then broke down and told me some of the things going on in his life. He was going through a divorce. The wife was going for his kids. He financially was distraught because he couldn't make it because, you know, he got kicked out of the, you know, they separated. He was out of the house. But he still wanted to support his kids. He couldn't. Have, it was just an immense thing. And his car broke down. It was that one trigger. You know, it only took that one thing. And I think that's what we're seeing is this mental stress on these comic book pros and they can't handle it. So maybe rather than as much of all this stuff we hear about, you know, that they, you know, they need money. Maybe they need more than anything. They need some mental help. They, they need, you know, a, a, a comic book artist and, and writer mental help fund, you know, to help get these people, to help get these people some help. Because if you're praising them and telling them how good of something they do, they're they're fine. But if you say anything negative, all of a sudden they can't handle it, which is also a maturity thing. And you know, like your dance slots and things, they have they're completely immature. I mean, you look at how they handle it; they don't know how to handle negativity in that way. I'm sorry, but that's part of life. That's part of working a job. So when these people work a job where they're indoors working in home. And they don't get to the outside world and see the real pressures of the world. They're immature in that area. They, they can't handle the constructive criticism that's essential to live through. It's essential for change. How can you change? How can you become better if there is not some form of constructive criticism? But now they've gotten to the point. And when I say this, I don't mean all of them, just for the record. Okay? They've gotten to the point that anytime there's any kind of constructive criticism or anything that runs counter to what they want to believe, they go crazy. And that's delusional. That's insanity. Maybe they need to sit down, discuss their issues, their problems, find ways to de-stress, quit looking for everything wrong in the world, I mean, it's okay to see things wrong and, and go for things. I have several things that I push for, and that's fine. But don't let it drive you to the state of delusional nutbaggery. You know you're suffering when you're unable to listen to the other side. Even if you disagree, you should be able to listen to the other side. Matter of fact, it's good. It helps you to be able to explain the holes in the logic. But you have to listen first. Now, why am I saying that? Because once again... That's another side, another symptom of delusion from mental illness. You cannot, with somebody with mental illness, they, can, they cannot process and you cannot reason with them. You have to sort of try to change the subject, get around there, sympathize with them. Think about it. That's how these comic pros are. No matter how many facts you have, no matter how much you show or how silly it is, you they cannot sympathize. You you have to sympathize because they cannot rationalize what you're saying. Well, it, they'll always come up with some kind of other reason, and there will be no connections, or even in a lot of cases, or very very far stretches, or very big straw man arguments, or completely bombastic ridiculousness that has no real connection. They like to vilify whole groups because they see everything as one. Because they, can, they have to see everything as them, against themselves. Once again, delusion. You, for example, you can take somebody with mental illness and delusion. You could have all their family members. Most of their friends tell them, hey, you need help. And sometimes you can still not get them to get a check because they think everybody is against them at that point. That's delusional. That's how these people are. So here, here's my thought. I'd love to hear your views. Do you, do you think I'm off on this? Or maybe, maybe there's a point. Maybe I'm right. Maybe they are suffering mentally. And I mean, not maybe to the super severe, you know, mental dementia going downhill, which is fatal, but maybe to the point of, of mental stress so severe, they're not thinking coherently because they put themselves in such a, a state 
due to finances, due to finding wars constantly, that they're unhappy and they've drove themselves to that state, which means they're only going to look for more reasons to be unhappy. Look at how quiet Stegman is most of the time. And then recently, over a piece of art, that was his triggering event. You have people like Ron Mars that have consistently been nuts online. I mean, he was sitting there calling for judgments on people before all the facts came in. And then just when somebody said, hey, why don't you just wait until the facts come out before you make judgment, he couldn't handle it. Because once again, there's that, that mental illness. Anything that goes opposed to what you see, he couldn't handle. Mental illness. So that's my thoughts. I'd like to know yours. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen. Thank you for my subscribers, new old. I appreciate all of you been there. If you want to help out the channel, go to that info bar down below. You can hit the link for my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You can help support these videos and things, and I really do appreciate it. A little frugal myself, American Dream, because we are completely fan-funded. We use no YouTube funding at all, okay? And we're using that funds to put mostly back into the videos, okay? Once in a while, I get a little frugal something special for, for doing videos, but mostly it's all going back to the videos, like getting comic books to review, working on getting a new computer, uh, getting better, you know, lighting and things like that. So we greatly appreciate all that. And also, my comic book is moving incredibly slow. Uh, my writer, I'm sure I gave him a lot to deal with. <laughs> so, so that in his defense, and he's had some issues he's been dealing with too as well. Uh, also, if you want, we have Redbubble. So I have CaptainFrugal.redbubble.com. You can get Captain Frugal merch. So if you want to buy yourself a shirt you know, with Captain Frugal, that's awesome. Frugal for us. We greatly appreciate you. All right. Well, thank you. Please hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment with your thoughts. Until next time, keep it frugal.